start up long right? Yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations. But second of all, I got to know about this face-off, this very famous face-off. How did, what was going on behind your mind there? Honestly, I, I think I was just falling in love. I don't, I, I, we just stared into each other's eyes and I was just like, I think this is the one, you know, so I'm not going to break contact. You can't deny my destiny, but no, nah, I think um, it was just it was a bit of chess, chess move. So he didn't want to look away. I'm not looking away. I was going to be there all day. My eyes were drying out though. I was just like, fuck it up, please break contact. And eventually he broke and I was like, oh, okay. Do you know how long you guys lasted? Because you lasted through two more face-offs and then I think you kept going, so. Yeah, I could feel people walk past me and they were like, like, come on, man, come on. Like, even the officials were pushing me and I was like, oh, stop moving me. Like, let me enjoy this moment. Yeah. So is that normal for you to have like something during face-offs or was this just this? Nah, not really. Sometimes you've got to spice it up. Everyone's just all like, oh, thank you, thank you. And they walk off like, you know, we just, we stared it out and I came on top. So what did you think of your opponent once you, once you got in there? Oh, like, I was just, he's very awkward, very awkward. He's undefeated. Um, his movement's awkward. He, he, looked a, he looked a little bigger than I thought. So it landed some good kicks, but, you know, I got the job done. Did the fight go the way that you had kind of anticipated it going, or did you have to make adjustments? In um, well, not really, but, you know, I thought there was going to be more to it. I didn't know it was going to be that quick, but I can't complain, you know. It was, uh, what was it, like a minute? You know, best minute of your life, though, so I hope everyone enjoyed it, you know. It's not, it's not about how long you last, you know, it's about what you do, so that's all that matters. Your face-off was definitely, like, three times longer than Yeah, exactly, itself. you see, so. Um, what's next for you? When you think of your, uh, your debut, have you had a chance to think about where you'd like that debut to happen or win or an opponent or anything like I mean, that? I'm open right now, you know. I come out, hopefully, injury-free. Didn't last long. I'm still fresh, you know. I know there's uh, the MSG card coming up. You know, that sounds exciting. I think I could be ready for that, but we'll see what happens. I'm ready to be active. I've got to use this, t this time now while I'm young to get in the wins. When you thought of this moment, becoming a, a UFC fighter officially, did, did this moment play out the way you thought it would in terms of just the way it would feel? Um, yeah, for sure. It's still a bit surreal right now, but I thought I would have I would have done more. There would have been more action in the fight, but you can't control these things, you know. I just got to step in there. You know, bing, bang, bosh, and he was out, so. What did Dana say to you when he walked past him after? Oh, he was just saying congratulations. He said it was too quick, but, you know, we move. Thank you. Well, Mario, over here, congrats on the win in the contract. Obviously, you're representing Portugal. We don't have too many guys from Portugal in the UFC, yes, so how does it feel to uh, represent Portugal? Oh, man, it's, it's just amazing. We haven't had enough fighters, you know. You know, I'm happy to be uh, representing them. You know, I was born in Lisboa, Vila Franca. You know, a lot of people don't know that, but. Now I'm here to, to let it be known. You know, I'm representing the UK, I'm representing Portugal, and I'm proud of it, always. And any time there's a heavyweight prospect coming on the container or just on the regional scene, and they really keep an extra eye on them, so when you come out and do the type of performance you do, what are you going to do now to kind of stand out and prove all those people right when, now that you're inside the company? Uh, just keep smashing people in the head. You know, keep getting the wins in. Show people, I'm mean, like, you know, that fight, I didn't get to show much, but, you know... There's going to be carnage, you know, and um, the next fight, I'll show more what I am. Sure, and obviously, uh, you have a very fun personality. Obviously, the, the face-off video went around social media, so yeah. do you see yourself as a guy that's going to really connect with the fans now with the tenure and that will really resemble to the average MMA fan? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm a chameleon, you know. I'm part of a dying breed like Tyson Fury, <laughs> so... And uh, speaking of heavyweights, is, are there any uh, dream fights you have within the UFC heavyweight roster? They're all, everyone's on notice, so I'm good to go. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congrats. Um, was this the first time you fought in America? Yeah, first time. Did fighting in Vegas live up to, to, to the expectations? 100%, 100%. First of all, Jesus, the jet lag, nah, don't get me started on that. Jet lag is crazy, it's crazy. Um, the heat as well. It's too hot out here, you know, for jet lag. Oh, mate. But it was fun at the same time. I, I look a bit, I'm a bit darker now. Got some melanin <laughs> in me, you know, but um, I can't complain. Are you looking to, you know, fight, fight in Vegas again? Or do you want to fight when, when the UFC goes over to London and Oh, fight? definitely. You know? I could, I'll fight anywhere, but I'd fight in Vegas again. But London would be great, you know. I can get more people to come watch me. A lot of people wanted to come over, but it's a lot harder. You know, some people can't come. They can't get a... Uh, Anesta. 
but we don't need to go into that. Awesome. Congrats. Let me just circle back to what you touched on with Amy, that it, there, you can't have too much control over this, and it's yeah. surreal. Yeah. But the way you had that walk-off was almost kind of like, yeah, that's, that was what was supposed to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's the work I put in. You know, me and my coaches, I had Stuart Austin, my MMA coach, and my teammate, Shah Kamali. We were in the back working hard, drilling, just, like, getting me focused and just understanding that like, I can't control, like, really if I win or not. You know, I can only control what I move, you know, take one foot at a time, one step at a time, one jab at a time, and then left hook. Speaking of jab and hook, walk me through that finish, because that left hook was just the thing of beauty. I just, uh, watching a lot of tape, I noticed that he always drops his hands when he comes forward. He's very awkward, though, like he's got these, like, puppet hands, you know, and it's deceptive, because he's, he's dropped two other people before his previous opponent, so you have to respect it. And, like, his low kicks as well, they were chopping, but I wasn't really feeling them. So, like, I was giving away to take something. So I said, I'll give away my legs. And then he stepped in, and then I got him with the left hook. And it's good because I haven't had a finish for a long time. Well, you have this extreme composure, almost like a young veteran. Where does that come from? Say that again, sir. That you have this extreme composure, yeah. even on these Contender Series lights, yeah. like a young veteran. Where yeah. does that come from, that discipline? Uh, I don't know. I like, part of my, my experience as well, like, when I used to be a bouncer for a long time, you know, I was just... Stayed stoic, dealing with all types of people, calling me names, trying to spit at me, all this and that. So I just said, um, there's nothing I can, I don't like let things phase me too much, you know. There's, there's worse things happening in the world. Yeah, sir, totally agree. Yeah. Um, when I, after the big knockout, I saw some people in the crowd start a chant for you. What was yeah. that? What, what's, what's the chant so I could get it ready for when you make your debut? Oh, what, Mario, oh, Mario Pinto, that's the one. <laughs> that's fire. Yeah. Uh, big fight, big, yeah. big fight coming up. The GOAT taking on Mia Chich. Yeah. It's your weight class. Give me a little pick, a little analysis. I think, um, honestly, I would go with Jones, but I think Pipe, I'm um, sorry, Stipe, everyone's uh, counting him out. Like, yeah. Stipe's got great boxing. He's got great footwork. You know, he's, he's got so much experience. You can't count him out. Like, Jones as well is not as young as he used to be, you know, so I think it could go either way. <laughs> they must be watching this live. Pinto. <laughs> you know, so like, if I fight in London, that's what it's going to be like. Yeah, in the Lions then. But, um, yeah, so I, I, got, I got Jones winning that for sure. I just feel like he's, uh, he's got more weaponry. You know, I feel like he can wrestle better. But I feel like Stipe can beat him in the striking for sure. That's what's up, man. Can't wait to see you in the Mari O2 arena. Congrats on the Let's win. Let's go. Can we expect that uh, footy type atmosphere every, at every fight of yours? Or? Say that again. Can we expect that football type atmosphere every time? Yeah, even worse. <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll go to Lisbon. Stade de Luz. Is that all good? So I'll just quickly, a big shout out to my management, Fair Play, and to Jorge, getting me here, giving me this opportunity. Big shout out to Fight Zone London. Uh, big shout out to Fight City Gym. Big shout out to my striking coach, Rowan Katsu. Helped me a lot, helped me set up that check hook. Um, obviously, my coach, Stuart Austin, has been with me from day one. Shah Kamali, big body banger, <laughs> known as Triple B, the bangler banger. Um, shout out to my family, you know, my mom, my dad my sister, my nephews, Mike, I love you guys so much. Um, it's been great. My son, we don't even talk about that. But um, he's just joking. I don't have a son. I don't have a son. I don't have a son. I used to say I have a son, so I didn't have to work. But, um, but yeah, it's been, um, I'm grateful for the experience. Thank you, everyone. Black Fado signing out. Bosh. <laughs>